Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. Uh, just a reminder that I did recently publish my C++ Best Practices book and there will be a link to it in the description for this episode. Be sure to check it out. It is an intentionally succinct, relatively short book and I tried to price it according to its length. And it is available on LeanPub and on Amazon Print On Demand if you're interested in getting a printed copy. Uh, this episode I expect to be, again, a relatively short one. This is shift left and shift right. These are new standard algorithms that were added in C++20. Now I'm going to do something that I don't usually do here. I'm going to kind of steal the code from the examples in cbpreference.com. And this is actually an interesting time for us here to uh, show that you can't actually execute your examples in CBP reference, but these these algorithms are pretty straightforward. They just literally shift the elements into the cane in the container to the left, and they shift the elements in the container to the right by the number of positions specified. There are some caveats. If you are doing a left shift and the value that you pass in is less than or equal to zero, then there is no effect. Now that's interesting because in a lot of scenarios, if you did a left shift by negative two, it would actually do a right shift. That is not the case in this algorithm. Similarly, for the shift right, if the value is less than zero, then it's gonna have no effect, or if the value is greater than or equal to than the range of elements in here. So this now kind of becomes like a shift of an integer. If you do a shift of a 32-bit integer left 32 times, that is actually undefined behavior in the C++ standard. So same deal here, except there's no undefined behavior. It just says there are no effects. Now, the question is, what condition does it leave the shifted values in? And this is why I want to bring up this. This has this... Um, object that is in an unspecified state. So this is their little struct S. It contains some value and a flag to say whether or not is in a specified state. So if the object has been moved from, it is in an unspecified state by their definition here. It's a valid but unspecified state. That is in fact what the standard requires of all standard containers that have been moved from. So they have this vector of S that is populated with these seven values and they do a shift left and a shift right. And you can see if they do a shift left by three, then they end up with four, five, six, seven here, question mark, question mark, question mark. So the values have all been shifted left three times. Then they do a shift right by two, which shifts in two more question marks on the bottom left of this example here and we end up with three of the seven values in an unspecified state. Let's go ahead and click there, run this code button. And you can see this actually does work. GCC 10.2 does have C++ 20 support for the shift left and shift right algorithms. So you can come here and easily play with this on the CVP reference webpage. And this is true for so many of the examples actually. Now, uh, it's not Compiler Explorer, right? So it's not our favorite online tool for compiling and executing C++ code. But what I want to do is I want to change this from an int, from an S to an int. Now, when you do a move from on a value from an integer, it leaves the original value unchanged. It is the same as a copy. The language specifies this specifically. So what are we going to see here? If we do this left shift three times, I think we'll see four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. And I think that is actually defined behavior for integers. And then when we do the shift right, that's where things are going to get really interesting. So let's go ahead and hit run here and see what this looks like. No match for operator left shift oh because it's trying to uh, output the entire container here so uh, let's just go ahead and write our own o stream operator overload why the heck not for integers and we'll just do a left shift of the value 
followed by space. Yes, that should work. So I don't know if we've ever talked about doing an operator overload for the uh, insertion operator. That's the other name for it here, and that's what's used for C out. So it's kind of a handy way of being able to just print whatever you want to if you write your own overload here. Minor mistake. All right, so we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we these values stayed where they were. So it was four, five, six, seven. And then we did this shift by right two. So these values stayed where they were and these got copied in uh, four, five, four, five, six, seven. So definitely something to keep in mind. If you go and use this algorithm, it's actually the same scenario as a race if, um, which we've not also talked about before on this channel. But the thing, like we've always been kind of taught that the, and with erase if, that the values that were erased were moved to the end of the container, that's not really correct. The values at the end of the container are left in an unspecified state. And here we can really see that the values are left in an unspecified state. They have been in fact moved from, um, or yeah, moved from in this case. And with integers, that leaves them as, as the value that they originally were. So um, this could get interesting with strings and that kind of thing too. But just so you know, uh, something to be aware of when you're doing this left shift and right shift, you're going to end up with values and moved from weird states. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Be sure to subscribe.